It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Tetsuya the Wise. Do human tourists visit Mobian locations? I can imagine it might be a little awkward, considering how most towns and villages aren't proportioned for a much taller sapient life. Could you imagine trying to find a hotel with human-sized beds? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine they do, and I imagine there are services that cater to them. You know, same way there are, you know... Uh, tourist traps around the world <laughs> that cater to certain nationalities that frequent them is yes. tourist resorts that are like yeah you're in this country but you might as well just be back home like there's no <laughs> difference like just just go home <laughs> uh i kind of hate that honestly but i'm weird so like if i go to, I go to canada i want to be i want to live like a canadian dang it Oh, wait, there's... Oh, never mind, never mind. That's, that really depends on where you are. That's not a good comparison. <laughs> Going off the last question, are there human and Mobian romances on Sonic's Earth? Would it be frowned upon by both species? I mean, Mobians should be able to pass the Harkness test well enough, but still. I don't want to wade into those waters. <laughs> I mean, we've I, seen it I, before, I, I, so let's say yes and just move on. <laughs> I mean, I get it on a certain level. If you have these humans and you have other sapient species coexisting, how is this any different from like Star Wars or Star Trek or the Tolkien universe? You know, humans and elves and dwarves all intermingling and la di da. Sure, why not? But the fact that the other sapient race is cartoon animals i think just for me it's a bridge too far i know that they're treated as people and they act like people and there really is no difference but it's that visual language that i feel like is just, mm, i don't know mm, yeah uh, I, uh, I am not going to comment on it in a official capacity let's put it that way Mm, yeah well i'm not either <laughs> right now maybe later if archie told you right after the genesis arc was finished that you only had up to issue 247 and sonic universe issue 50 before everything had to be re rebooted how would you tell the story then would you try to tie up as many loose ends as possible or something else entirely uh had we had the foresight uh yeah i well this is me talking. The Ian of then would probably try a different approach. But if I had the Wayback Machine and we're trying to rewrite history, I would tr I would abandon all plans we had at the time and focus on tying up loose ends and bringing things to a nice conclusion as best we could in the time allotted. Because we we thought we had time. We mm. thought we had all the time in the world and. We continued our glorious decompressed storytelling and we got what we got. You thought you had all the time in the world twice. Hmm. I know that you haven't played any of the Kingdom Hearts games, but imagine an alternate universe where instead of teaming up with Disney, Square decided to do a crossover with Nintendo properties instead. And if instead of the Pir Pirates of the Caribbean world in Kingdom Hearts 2, it was based on Skies of Arcadia. It was on the GameCube, and we're using Smash Brothers rules for inclusion. <laughs> would you be more inclined to play the games then? I would have it memorized. I would have multiple 100% complete files, because you said Skies of Arcadia, you crafty so-and-so. <laughs> Seriously, that yeah. is kind of a fun idea. Like, they go to the Mushroom Kingdom world, and, yeah. like, Goofy is the world's tallest toad now. <laughs> Kirby. Or, oh, boy. They go to the Kirby world and like Donald is now the world's angriest Waddle D. <laughs> <laughs> they go to Hyrule world and, you know, Sora is an elfin character and maybe Goofy's a moblin, you know? Oh, uh, the, Me the Metroid world and they're... Oh, mm. God. <laughs> mm. Mm. Look, Sora, I'm a crate. <laughs> hmm. Tiny little angry Ridley Donald. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> or or is he's a chozo. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy but that would be fun that honest i would honestly be more inclined to look into it in that case i think yeah yeah or maybe not because it might you know if it's still kingdom hearts kind of meander off into its own thing with the disney and final fantasy elements being just the odd window dressing every now and again yeah yeah but the, the Nintendo worlds would be funny. God, Skies of Arcadia rendered in a modern game engine. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty good in uh, Transformed, but that's only a tiny, tiny sliver. Dude, I lost that first race so bad because I was just taking my time looking at all the... Look at the links! <laughs> look at the links! It's, all, it's a pirate island. I'm going to just take my time and look at every little thing on this map. <laughs> that was just one gigantic love letter of a stage. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's one gigantic love letter of a game, to be fair. True, 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 true. Yeah, just... Oh, man. <sighs> all right, Internet, here's your homework. Sora, Donald, and Goofy as Skies of Arcadia-style pirates. Go. <laughs> All right. How would the Sonic cast react to someone asking for a picture and autograph? And just so we're covering our bases, the cast is each member of the Sonic teams, and just for fun, Honey. Oh, it's a list and a half. Okay, so Sonic would be cool with it. I'm sure he gets this all the time. Like he's very quick with the signature too, so if he doesn't dwell on it, it's just oh hey sure zoom gone. Yep. Uh, Tails would be flustered, like, attention for <laughs> him. He he's acknowledged. Oh gosh, well he, uh, sure okay, and you know hang out and talk and you know make the most of the moment because oh my goodness, when is this ever going to happen again? Uh, <laughs> Knuckles Knuckles doesn't understand the concept. How did they get a picture of him? You want me to sign a picture of myself? Okay, you're weird. Fine, go away. <laughs> uh. Amy would be more or less like Tails, but more in the moment. She would be better at engaging. Uh, she would be, you know, very flattered and happy to sign and, you know, hang out and chatter. Uh, Cream would be a little surprised and perplexed, but, you know, attention. People like her. That's a nice thing. You know, small children respond well to that. Big, I think he would be befuddled, but okay. He would do it. Sign here. <laughs> okay. He'll do it. He doesn't really get it. Why? But okay. If they're, they're happy, sure. <laughs> Shadow, good luck even getting to acknowledge you. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's Rouge, true. sure. <laughs> While you're distracted with the signature, she's robbing you blind. Yeah, I was going to say, she's like <laughs> stealing your wallet at the same time as she's handing over the <laughs> picture. Mm -hmm. Or she charges for it. Or, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, capitalism. <laughs> Oof. Omega refuses. Pointless. <laughs> he does not know how to write. He only knows how to gun. <laughs> Vector is super flattered, and he also wants to charge for it, but, you know, for less selfish reasons. You know, if there's a market for it, then yeah. We're going to eat hearty tonight. Boys actually have protein in the ramen. <laughs> SBO has like a dedicated, like, what do you call it? A chalk? You know, the, the stamp of your personal emblem. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, and Charmy is like overly hyperactive about it. Like, oh boy, attention, signing, signatures for everybody. Sign your face, sign your arm, sign your head. <laughs> they didn't ask for that, Charmy. Sign your shoes, shine your teeth. Okay, stop it. Charmy, get, get back in the bag. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of it. Blaze is uncomfortable with it, but being a princess and I'm assuming having some face time with her people, she's at least used to it, but it's more businesslike on her end. Yeah. Uh, Silver's just tickled by the idea. He's all giddy about it. Sure. Why not? Styx wants to know where you got those pictures from. <laughs> she wants to know where you got the pictures from. You've been stalking her. You want her signature so that you can copy her signature so that you can make her sign all sorts of illegal documents. Aren't you? Aren't you? You can't catch her alive. <laughs> uh, Tangle's just as bad as Charmy, and she can also sign things with her tail. So she's like signing three things at once. <laughs> They're illegible, but she's still doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whisper, she's like Shadow. If you can manage to catch her, good luck. But she's not interested. Yeah. Uh, 
Jewel, Bell, kind of the same boat as Tails. They're just flattered to be acknowledged. And sure, if you want, they, they don't necessarily see why, but they're not going to turn you down or disappoint. Rough and tumble, they demand you pay them. <laughs> and then they would and then sit there and argue, do, yeah. <laughs> after you do, they sign the autograph, mug you, and steal the autograph. <laughs> I was I was thinking they would just end up just arguing with each other over who has the better signature or something like that, you know. Possibly. And just not, they just get into a fight and, you know, end up your picture would be destroyed and you'd have no autograph and <laughs> uh, but they would still abscond with your money because of course they would. Eggman, uh, he makes a big deal out of it. More of a big deal than you want him to. I was going to say this is like this is literally what all Eggman wants in life. Is he has a robot pen that does the signing for him. Yeah. It is powered by the tiniest of flickies. Yes. And also Metal Sonic. His signature enlists you in the Eggman Empire. <laughs> if he acknowledges you, he just tears it up. Yeah, he doesn't care. Uh Surgeon Kit, they just mug you. They don't even make the autograph. <laughs> well, Kit might try, <laughs> but Surge would not let him. Kit's just weird. Why are you approaching him? Why Why do you want to interact with him? He's with Surge. Get away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, why are you approaching Surge? He's the only one within her inner circle. Back off. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Starline is just as bad as Eggman. Yep. This he has is... his own custom signing pin. This is all Starline ever wanted. Acknowledgement and uh, <laughs> someone who understands his greatness. And Honey's a pro. Oh, man, this like... is, yeah. Honey is like, she's, this is her element. Yeah, she's got the booth. She's got the, you know, line figured out. She has security to make sure that the line keeps moving. She engages in an earnest but efficient way so that you feel like you've talked to her for the rest for your entire life, but it's only been like two minutes. <laughs> and you come along with like not only the original autograph you bought, but like a personalized headshot that she did that's already custom printed with her name on it. That's right. Plus a coupon for her latest line of clothing. So yeah, no, Honey. Hot day. Shows how everybody else should do it. Yeah, yeah. She's like, bam, bang on influencer. That's a, that's her style, man. <laughs> you don't look sweet. You ain't wearing honey. Exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I do like this one from our chat. Starline approaches you and offers his, his signature. <laughs> No one asked for it. <laughs> that is the correct answer. I rescind my original answer. This is the correct one. It's like, do you want my autograph too? I'm Starline. <laughs> my name is Dr. I'm Starline. I'm quite famous, you know. Infamous, you might even say. Mm -hmm. Why are you walking away? Get back here. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I recently read the first 40 or so pages of Dragoon, and I'm interested so far. I especially like the bit of world building using the altered storybook. Though my question is, say you choose between funding either the first three books of the comic or an animated pilot to pitch to different networks for a full series, which would it be? Given the present state of the animation industry, give me the books. <laughs> I was going to say, is it, trying to pitch an animation would be a, it would be awesome to see but it's a very risky venture and expensive now, you know in the magical make-believe world where i have all the money you know i just fund the whole thing myself it is a 100 percent vanity project yeah and you know do it the way i want it done but <laughs> i don't think there's a lotto big enough to handle that right now mm. it's not what i've entered into so i would much rather have the comics done first so that the foundational story is there and that other media could potentially spin from that, but get the base story out there first. I do would, I would absolutely adore to see an animated one day. Sure. But I would rather tell the story uh, as quickly as possible to get it out there rather than, put all my eggs in one basket and hope that it gets picked up by a network. And then that network has ideas on how, how things should be and proper mm, demographics and blah, 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 blah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Give me my graphic novels. And then you do all the things they say and they still cancel you after season two. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
This might have been covered in the master list, but I couldn't find it anywhere. But why did you step down as head writer for the comics? I didn't. Uh, the editors decided it was time to have Evan pick up the torch and go. That was also about the time I was working on Frontiers, so they wanted to make sure that you know I wasn't divided in my attention. I was busy with the game, so let Evan run the comic for a bit. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, we we did we couldn't say it at the time, obviously, but you know, you were you were a little busy. Yeah, just a little. One day, the citizens of Sonic's world decide that they've had enough of Eggman's antics and somehow find a way to put him in prison. For some reason, he decides to play along with the judicial system and hires a lawyer to drop every one of his charges. Eggman then remembers a certain commercial he stumbled upon not too long ago and comes to the conclusion that he better call Saul. <laughs> Ignoring the fact that this might imply Albuquerque would be canon to Sonic's world. Wait, you should, wait it is not? <laughs> would it Saul Goodman find a way to get the good doctor off the hook or would this be one criminal he just can't work with? I'm just going to shamelessly uh, transplant the plot idea for the Wes Weasley. Wait, rehash that a bit. Yeah. Rehash so that, you know, Saul knows what he's up against. So his first uh, appeal is that it's a mistrial. Eggman has promised a jury of his peers, and clearly no one can match his intellect. He is peerless. <laughs> and when that gets thrown out, he argues that the Eggman Empire doesn't acknowledge the sovereignty of any other nation, let alone their judicial system. You can't try him. And then that gets tossed out. So he just kind of lets things proceed with offering very little pushback at all until the verdict comes down. And then he moves for mistrial one last time because uh, he never was representing Eggman. They never officially agreed to anything. They never signed any paperwork. He hasn't been represented this entire trial. Therefore, mistrial. He gets off scot-free and he'll just take the lumps for it because his client, who wasn't really his client, wasn't convicted. <laughs> uh, well... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. In previous podcasts, you said the Super Emeralds were no longer usable as they were turned to stone after the events of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. However, with Sonic Orange... So however, with Sonic Oranges... <laughs> however, with Sonic Origins now confirming that there are only seven Chaos Emeralds, and in the game, the regular Emeralds turn into the Super Emeralds, wouldn't that mean that there are at least two sets of Chaos Emeralds? The relationship between the Chaos Emeralds and the Super Emeralds still is kind of weird. It does seem like they get turned into the Super Emeralds, but we see the Super Emeralds turned to stone in Mania. So those are the leftover shells. I, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, I almost said oranges. Then I actually said oranges deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> so... There are many people who have a problem with the term kid show or kids media, as some would say, that it implies said media is either unfit for adult consumption or automatically worth less than media made for adults. Some would say that a better label for such products would be all ages media. But what do you think about the use of either term? I think it depends on the product and what's being applied to it. Sonic, I see as an all ages media. I think it should be accessible and entertaining to just about any demographic, but there is kids media out there that is for kids. It's specifically designed for children. And if adults don't find it engaging or interesting, fine. It's not meant for you. There is adult entertainment and which unfortunately has its own connotations. But um, Sonic also has a specific appeal, I think to a more a younger demographic. Sure, sure. The primary demographic is, you know, your tween boys, but it does have a very wide appeal. Yes. Like the retention of adult fans in Sonic is almost unparalleled in any other uh, fantasy media. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Just how devoted the Sonic fandom is. I Somebody was telling me the actual numbers and it's like, oh, wow. Mm hmm we're kind of a big deal. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and that's why I prefer to call it all ages. I don't like the negative connotations that come with kids media in that the assumption that it is, as you said, worth less or um, inherently inferior to some degree, because it's, if it's geared for a certain audience, that's fine. 
if it's meant to be children's media, let it be for children's media and let the adults consume something else. Not everything has to be, you know, entry level franchise devotion material. And likewise, adult material <laughs> comes with its own connotations, mm. usually raunchy. And that's tiresome because you can have adult media that is appealing to adults that doesn't necessarily have to showcase gratuitous blood, sex, and violence. You know, do something that works with heavier themes and, you know, maybe pushes a boundary or two, but isn't obscene in some way. And that's not me being, being puritanical. You know, I like my naughty stuff too, just as much as the other guy, but you know, it's become synonymous. And I feel like that's putting blinders on the potential for what could be actual adult entertainment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all boils down to a hyper fixation on one interpretation of what could be a broadly attributed term. Yeah. That's very common, unfortunately, but uh, yeah. I, I, Sonic is all ages media. And uh, you know what, as far as I'm concerned, like what you like and watch what you yeah. want, play what you want. Who cares what anybody else thinks? It don't matter because they don't matter. Doesn't matter. If you like Elmo's adventures in ABC land, hot diggity. Good for you. <laughs> As you should. I know that you've tried to integrate the Freedom Fighters into the IDW universe multiple times, especially Sally. However, I feel like one of the strengths of the IDW comics is that they're a clean slate, ripe with brand new ideas and characters. I personally believe that trying to bring back the old cast from the comics would be like clinging to the past, when that effort could be directed towards looking forwards to new and interesting concepts. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Well, I think it hinges on the concept that we would be bringing back the old Archie Freedom Fighters and we would not. No. They're done. They're gone. That's That I can say with 99% certainty. Um, this wouldn't even be the Sat AM cast. They would likely be the inspiration, the foundation. But this would be like... A, a new incarnation. For yeah. yeah. For lack of a better term, the official versions of the freedom fighters. It would be a new interpretation of them. Um, I really like to mine the older material and the minutia. Personally, mm -hmm. I feel like they are a wealth of opportunities to explore. And I just hate seeing that material drop by the wayside and just fully retired. But at the same time, as you said, the cast as it is, is quite fast. And there's lots of room to explore what we already have. So, you know, I have, I am pushing where I can when I can. There hasn't been an actual decision made yet because it's not a top priority. Um, if it comes to be and we get a, a new incarnation, cool. I'm glad that we can do something with a material that has a fandom already kind of built into it and can breathe new life into these older materials. And if it doesn't, if they are, you know, if the final word is, nope, retired, don't touch them again, then they had a good run. I did my due diligence. I tried. And there you go. We move on. Such is life. I mean, technically, any Sonic media is kind of clinging to the past, <laughs> if you think about it. Because, like, he's uh, he's been around for a long, 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 long time. Three decades. And, uh... Nope. You know, a lot of his popularity, I think, still hinges on nostalgia. Not all of it, but there's definitely a lot of it there. So, yeah, I, I, but also just be like, it would be a cool thing for the fans, you know, the fans who've been around for nearly 30 years or longer. It's just, uh, you know, a little acknowledgement that, you know, the old things are still valid and, you know, that they belong as part of the sonic greater sonic landscape you know and our last question from tetsuya how would kit react to surge getting a boyfriend girlfriend or a non-specific gender friend how long does it take someone to drown it's not that long <laughs> it depends i think it's like two minutes yeah i don't know and, uh, something like that yeah depends on what kind of dissolving properties the water he can control can actually contain hide the evidence Mm -hmm. He wouldn't respond well, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, he wouldn't respond. He wouldn't. No, I don't think he'd respond well to Serge getting any other friends. 
acknowledging mm-hmm. any other people. <laughs> and, you know, she's actually upset that somebody she made a connection with just kind of ghosted her. And Kit, you know, is reassuring. You know, at least he'll always be by her side. She doesn't need anyone else. It's true. It's true. <laughs> On that dark note, it's today. We're, we're at the end of this episode. <laughs> Thank you, Tetsuya the Wise, for sponsoring this episode. If you want a Bumblecast mini of your own, head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Bye!